So moving on to um, Veronica Peet, um, who is on my uh, left here. I was lucky enough to meet Veronica Peet uh, via uh, Sophie, and I always oh, pass. Yeah, very awesome. Thank you. I always get my last name so wrong. Um, who is a fantastic artist who works with um, uh, prosthetic limbs. So she's been building the uh, real life covers for prosthetic limbs. Was her was her original training, but she's moved into building um, these alternative. Um, limbs that uh, sometimes skin the uh, prosthetics um, that, uh, that the clients um, uh, have when they come into a studio. So we have a short three minute video that's been edited by um, Mimesis Films and the guys around you are Mimesis Films, um, Jenna Barak and uh, Lisa um, have done a fantastic job in a short three minute film and I'll ask uh, Veronica to speak. So my name is Sophie Di Oliveira and I'm the director of the Alternative Limb Project, which was set up in August 2011. Um, we make a realistic-looking uh, prosthetics, but also more alternative ones. That's really down to the amputee, it's their imagination, and then we kind of create it and make it happen. My name is Veronica Pete. I'm an above the knee amputee, and I work together with the Alternative Limb Project um, on creating a very nice alternative cover for my prosthetics. I had a really bad accident in about 2010, so I had to have my leg amputated above the knee, and I was fitted with a prosthetic after about a year in the hospital. With time, when you learn to walk with it, you also think about the actual aesthetics and how it's going to look, and that becomes important to you. Um, and that's when I started thinking about kind of covers and um, alternate limbs. I met Sophie from my prosthetist and I was aware that she was making um, these realistic looking um, covers and also that she's making alternative covers so that it doesn't necessarily have to emulate the human body. It can be something um, completely true to itself, which is that it's a, an electronic, um, like, it's going to be very much cyborg inspired. Um, it'll be a nice metallic finish. It will have a nice little secret compartment and a little button that allows it to light up. So I'm going for the very futuristic cyborg look. I didn't want to go around pretending that it was my own leg. I didn't want to feel like I need to cover this up. I need to make out like it's it's not a prosthetic leg. I didn't want that. I wanted. I mean, I'm, I'm proud of the fact that it is a prosthetic leg. I think just the fact that I can walk on it um, so well and that it can function so well. Um, I think that's that's a great thing. So I wanted it to be true to itself and look like a prosthetic leg, but a very cool one and a very futuristic one. You know, initially the project started off with just kind of playing around with the ideas of making something look alternative, just in style. But now we're kind of looking at alternative functions as well. So whether that would be an arm that you could plug your kind of um, your iPhone in, or you could lift up your leg and use it as a keyboard and plug that in um, to, to a computer, also a way of expressing yourself and a way of expressing perhaps your confidence about the leg and the fact that you're not you don't want to hide it you want to show it off um, and it's a piece of body art really the most common response um, that I've had from from a client who's kind of worn their alternative limb out um, is that for them it's really refreshing because other people they're seeing something that's there as opposed to what's missing So I actually just got this leg today, so great opportunity to show it off. <laughs> Sophie just finished it this afternoon, and if you don't mind, I'm just going to stay seated because it's easier to show, really. So this is it. I'm very happy with it. Um, basically, it has a little secret compartment. We are really looking um, to go into the cyborg look, and I'm fully embracing the fact that I'm kind of becoming a cyborg. Um, it's definitely a better alternative to being disabled. In fact, I think um, the term disabled needs a rebranding, really, because I think when you're labeled as disabled, you think, oh, well, you can't do this or you can't do that. But when you think, well, actually, I'm not disabled, I'm enhanced and I'm a cyborg, that, that just gives you a whole new outlook and it really just helps your confidence. And I think one of the biggest things as an amputee that you need to overcome is that psychologically you're looking at yourself thinking, oh, my God, 
I've lost the load, how am I going to cope with this? How am I going to look at myself again thinking um, about confidence? So I think it's definitely important for it to be aesthetically nice as well. So um, it has a little secret compartment, um, which I haven't really decided yet what I'm going to keep in there, but any ideas are welcome. <laughs> Um, there's also a little button that I can light up with it. It's not a very strong light, but I can alternate between a couple of different um, colors. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. If anyone has any questions, let me know. Veronica, I want to ask you, to be put on the panel on human enhancement, yep. with respect, how does that with the idea that we're, we're framing this inside of the, the idea of enhancement. For you, is it an enhancement as such, or is it about the Well, it's, um, it's definitely, um, it definitely gives you choices as an amputee. I'm not sure if, if it's an enhancement uh, to your own leg. I mean, my own leg is always going to be working better than this one. But um, it's, it's definitely an enhancement as opposed to being an amputee who's in a wheelchair or has an, uh, an HS leg. So I think um, um, it is an enhancement. And what sort of, I mean, you, you saw the response here, everyone was desperate to, to kind of look at the leg and engage with the leg. Yeah. How, how are you going to deal with those responses going? Well, afterwards, I'm happy to um, show it to everybody who's um, <laughs> to have a closer look. The, the only reason I ask is because I know in conversations with, with Neil, um, sometimes at these transhuman events, and apologies if this turns into one of those. Um, the, the yeah, okay, hold on. Not yet. <laughs> Um, I know that some amputees who, or people who experiment with self cyborgization can feel like they're almost being put on stage as the examples of this stuff. And, and how is, I mean, it was quite new to engaging in these debates. I mean, how does. Well, I think it's a good thing because I think when amputees are um, faced with their new kind of life, um, it's. It's a very good thing to know that you have options in terms of aesthetics and that you have um, really good prosthetics available. When I first um, lost my limb, I thought, well, I'm probably going to be in a wheelchair forever. I didn't even realize that there were such high-tech prosthetics, and especially not that you can get all sorts of really nice covers. So for me personally, that's when I started becoming kind of, I started accepting it, when I started seeing other people as well with um, kind of nice-looking prosthetics, and I think it's a good thing.